Alright guys, uh, in an earlier video I explained to you guys, uh, or I was talking to you rather, about one of the properties of glass that we compare forensically, uh, and that was density. And this is a continuation on that discussion on density. Uh, in the earlier video I described to you one of the ways that we can determine the density of a piece of glass, and that's by using a technique called um, volume displacement or using something oh. called Archimedes Principle. Um, and, and if you have a very large piece of glass, um, at a crime scene like this piece of glass, this is quite large, you could use Archimedes Principle or Volume Displacement to determine the density of this piece of glass. The problem though becomes quite often at crime scenes we don't have really big pieces of glass left behind. Uh, quite often what we have instead are, are trace pieces of glass or very small pieces of glass. Something like this little small piece of glass. In fact you may not be able to see it very well on the camera. But the problem with trying to figure out the density of a really small piece of glass like this one using volume displacement or Archimedes principle is that if you place it into a cylinder like this one, if I put this piece of glass in the cylinder, the volume doesn't change that much. And so you get very inaccurate uh, and not very precise measurements. And so figuring out the density of glass using Archimedes principle or volume displacement for really small pieces of glass is just not very effective. So what I want to talk about in this little video is another way to determine the density of glass and it's a technique called the float sink technique. Now the float sink technique is exactly what it sounds like. Um, we learned in our earlier video that when something is very dense, uh, for example if it's denser than a liquid that it's, that it's placed in, it's going to sink. So for example if I take this very dense steel ball and I place it in, in, in water, a liquid, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sink. Right? Sink right down to the bottom. And that's because steel, its density is much higher than water. If you remember in our earlier video, I said that water's density is almost exactly one gram per milliliter. So steel is much more dense. It's much heavier for that small volume. Now this this ball, which is the same size by the way, in fact if we were to take our little measuring caliper and if I were to measure the size of this ball and then measure the size of the ball I just dropped into my liquid, they're the same volume but, but they're not the same density and that's because the one that I dropped in the, in the water there, that one's steel but this one, this one's made out of cork, the same stuff that's in your, your cork of your wine bottle which is really really light so even though it's the same volume it's not the same density because it has a much lower mass. In fact, if I were to drop this into water, you can see that it floats right up on the top. So even though those two balls have the same volume, they're not the same density. And because the cork is lower density than the water, it actually floats up on the top. Because the steel has a higher density than the water, it actually sinks down to the bottom. What would happen though if the density of a ball that I placed in the water had the exact same density as the water itself. Would it float? Would it sink? Or would it do something else? And the answer is it would do something else. It would stay what we refer to as neutrally buoyant. Meaning if I put it in the water, if I, if I lowered it down and then just kind of let go of it, it wouldn't float back up to the top. And it wouldn't sink down lower. It would actually just sit there. And that's because if a piece of glass, or whatever it is, if the, if the object that you put in the liquid has the same density as the liquid, it won't float, it won't sink, it'll stay right there. That's actually how a submarine works. Submarines, big, large, metal watercraft, right? Submarines can sink, or they can float, or they can actually stay neutrally buoyant. The way they actually work is, submarines have these um, very large tanks that are built into the submarine which the submarine in general is full of air which makes it very less dense, right? Kind of like a beach ball, right? Fill it up with air, put it in the water. If you try to hold it under the water, it's going to pop right back up. So even though a submarine is very heavy, because it's so big, it has a really big volume, and because it's full of air, because people are inside the submarine, most of the time it floats. However, these tanks that are attached to the submarine, these ballast tanks, what a submarine can do is it can pump water into these ballast tanks, which actually suddenly makes the submarine much heavier, 
the volume stays the same. The submarine doesn't get bigger and smaller, but because you pump water into these tanks, suddenly it gets much heavier, which makes it more dense, which then causes the submarine is it fills these tanks with water and it becomes more heavy and more dense, it causes the submarine to sink. And then if the submarine wants to rise back up again, it pumps all the water out of those tanks, which makes it lighter, which therefore makes it less dense, which then causes it to rise to the surface. If the submarine wants to sink down and then stay neutrally buoyant, it just, the, the operators of the submarine control the amount of water that's in those ballast tanks so that the density of the submarine matches the density of the water. So how can we use that concept forensically? Well, if I had a small piece of glass, if I were to drop it in a liquid, I could observe whether or not that piece of glass floated on the top of the liquid, if it sank down to the bottom of the liquid, or if it stayed neutrally buoyant. Now, if I drop the glass into the liquid and it sinks, then I know that the glass is more dense than the liquid. If I know what the density of the liquid is, that gives me an idea of kind of the density of the glass. So, for example, if I take a piece of glass, let's take one of these marbles, for example. Right? If I drop the marble into some liquid, like water, again, water has a density of one gram per milliliter. If the glass drops to the bottom, then I know that the density of the marble, the glass marble, has to be higher than one gram per milliliter. Now what if I drop the marble into a liquid, not water, maybe a more dense liquid, because there are other liquids out there that are way more dense than water. For example, there's a, there's a liquid called bromobenzene, which is an extremely dense liquid. I don't have any here to work with because I'm here at my home, but in the laboratory we work with bromobenzene. If my beaker was full of bromobenzene and I dropped my, my glass marble in it, it would actually float because bromobenzene liquid is much more dense than the glass marble. So if I know the, the density of the bromobenzene and I know that the glass marble is floating on top of it, then I know that the glass marble has to be lower than bromobenzene, yet higher than water. Ultimately though, if I took a bunch of different liquids and I dropped my glass into different liquids, some with really high densities, some with really low densities, eventually I'm going to find a liquid that has the same density as the glass where if I drop the glass in there, it's not going to float on top, it's not going to sink down to the bottom, it's going to stay neutrally buoyant right in the middle. In fact, I can actually make that liquid by mixing two liquids together. Bromobenzene is a very, very dense liquid, but then we have another liquid called uh, uh, bromoform, which is a very light or less dense liquid. So what I can do is I can actually mix them together, a little bit here, a little bit there, until I get a liquid that's the exact same density as my piece of glass. If I drop that piece of glass in the liquid, it's not going to float, it's not going to sink, it's going to stay neutrally buoyant. So now how's that helpful? Well, if I wanted to compare two pieces of glass to see if they had the same density, remember the scenario I mentioned earlier in our other video was, what if I had a hit and run accident? Someone got hit by a car and a piece of glass was left behind at the crime scene. If I collect that piece of glass, which is an unknown, I don't know who it belongs to, and then if we track down the car that we think was responsible for the accident, and we take the glass from that car, now I have a glass from a known source, the car, and the unknown glass from the crime scene. I want to compare them to see if they have the same properties. Well, if I, if I take those two pieces of glass and I place them in that liquid, that liquid that I've adjusted so that it matches the density of the glass from the crime scene, if I put the crime scene glass into that liquid, it's going to stay neutrally buoyant. If I drop the piece of glass from the automobile, what I want to do is I want to observe, does it do the same thing? If I put the glass from the automobile into the liquid, if it sinks, then it doesn't have the same density as the glass from the crime scene. It would actually be more dense. Or if I put the glass from the vehicle in the liquid and it floats, that also doesn't have the same density. So if they don't do the same thing, if the unknown piece of glass from the crime scene and the known piece of glass from the automobile, if they have different densities, then they cannot be from the same glass. And that would mean then that they don't match and that would then mean that the car that we found was not the one 
that was the, the one that hit the, the person in our scenario. So it's called the float sink technique. I can take two pieces of glass, put them in the liquid. If one floats and the other sinks, or if uh, one of them stays neutrally buoyant and the other one floats on top, then that would tell us that they don't have the same density. If they both sink and they both float at, in the same liquids, then that would tell us that they do have the same density and we might actually have a match. So that's the float sink technique.